everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Vagabond. And uh, the last time we sat down, we built uh, four of these panels. And so we're gonna get started decorating our first panel. And um, I actually haven't decided the sequence I'm gonna add them into the book, so I'm not gonna tell you what page this is. Um, when we go to actually uh, apply it inside the book, um, you'll see the order that I'm gonna lay them down. So each one of these, it's just a, a top side panel, so you can use them interchangeably, interchangeably through the book. I, I am going to do the first two on Lady Vagabond. I just don't know which one's going to be the left and which one's going to be the right. And that'll make a little bit more sense shortly. Okay, so we're going to start with a very large flap, and, and I'm thinking that this is going to be page one for Lady Vagabond. So I'm going to want it to open uh, away from the spine. And this is a very large panel flap. Um, it's eight and a half by nine and three quarters. So eight and a half by nine and three quarters. And it's gonna have two score lines. You're gonna score it half inch and again at seven eighths of an inch. So just under, just one eighth of an inch under uh, one inch. So half inch and seven eighths. And you're gonna put tape on the half inch, and that's what's actually gonna get added uh, directly to this chipboard panel. Okay. So we're gonna do all the interactive elements and decorate this outside of the book, and then we'll add the whole panel inside the book. Okay, so there's two, there's two score lines which creates this gusset. We're going to apply the first score line to the edge, I'm gonna actually go this way, to the edge of this panel. And I'm just lining it up top to bottom. Oops. There we go. And then when we push it over and we have our um, our gusset here, it's gonna be just slightly smaller than um, the panel that it's attached to, just ever so slightly. Um, I can tell you it's not quite a quarter of an inch. Again, eight and a half by nine and three quarters, score at half inch and then score at seven eighths. Okay. The next element that we're going to add is a pocket. And this pocket is eight and three quarters by seven. So it's eight and three quarters across by seven. You're gonna score a half inch on three sides. And we're gonna add some tape. Okay, so we're gonna open the panel and then we're going to apply this pocket. Oops, I still need to put one more piece of tape down here. We're gonna apply this toward the bottom of the panel, the base panel, like so. So it's gonna get installed just like so. you can come in. <laughs> My dog's at the door. It's dinner time here, so she just ate. Okay, there we go. Scoot that out of the way. So we're just going to uh, line it up with the two edges, like so. Okay, so there is our large pocket like so. And I haven't cut a uh, insert out, but I will put a large insert into this pocket after we get the rest of the um, uh, elements added to the page. Okay, so the next piece is um, a top-down 
flap that's going to hold everything together in the pocket. I'm just doing a quick dry fit and I'm going to shave that down just a smidge um, so it fits on top of the pocket a little better. And this is seven and three quarters by five, seven and three quarters by five. So it's uh, the width of the panel, which is seven and three quarters, and then it's five inches down and we score a half inch on the five inch side. Okay, and this is just going to go right along the top. Of the panel, like so. Okay, and then we're going to add a magnet and that's going to keep this all closed. Okay, that looks like it's about right. soften the edges up a little and then down here we have got a couple of things going on we I'm gonna set those aside so you're going to need two of these they are seven and five eighths seven and five eighths by nine and a half seven and five eighths by nine and a half you're gonna have two of those and um, we're gonna score at half inch and at five and then we're gonna fold them like so half inch and five and then on the bottom of the pocket, we are going to install like so, okay? So that when you open it, it's gonna open up like that. So, let me get my tape on here real quick. And I think I've got these both folded right, but I'll have to double check. Okay, again, it is seven and five eighths by nine and a half, and you're gonna score at a half inch, and then again at five, and then we are going to apply this hinge to the very bottom of the page. Is that what I'm doing? To the very bottom of, yeah, okay. To the bottom of the page, nope, not yet. Sorry, I gotta make sure, I'm not used to building, we're gonna go ahead and get tape on this one too. Uh, building these folios and the sequence in which you build them really makes a big difference because uh, you don't have a hinge. So anyways, it's a little different. So there are going to be a left and right flap on the bottom like so. And um, that feature is going to be on the inside. So we're going to add these first. These are six and a half, six and a half by four and a half. And you're going to score at half inch. I'm going to double check. Half inch. And five eighths. Half inch and five eighths. So you can have this little bit of a gusset, and um, that's going to give room for those flaps to be inside. And um, we're going to install these first, and then we're going to test these and make sure that they're going to fit between the left and right uh, panel. And if they don't, then we will trim this, but we'll add these first, okay? They're gonna get lined up with the edge of the pocket here. And there's two of these, six and a half by four and a half, score half inch, score five eighths. And there'll be a magnet on this as well. And these are just going to get installed left and right to the very uh, outside edges of the pocket. Okay. There. 
There you go. Here's one. Uh, by the way, I decided to, since these are not pocket pages, I mounted them on the chipboard. That's going to make it more rigid. Um, but then I also decided to use a little bit heavier cardstock than my Astro Brights. So I'm actually using um, what's called heavy weight cardstock from Hobby Lobby. And it doesn't actually have the weight on it, but I believe it's around 80 pounds. But like I said, it's actually not on the packaging, so I can't be sure. Um, it's kind of strange. They they don't put the, the weight. I think that I got this in wrong, so I'm gonna try that one more time. I didn't get that far enough over. that's all going to get covered by designer paper so I'm not really stressing about it but I had actually not folded it on the right score line before I installed it so it was too far over okay let's do that one more time there we go there we go and like I said that's all going to get covered with designer paper so I'm not really worried about it Okay, so now these are our, this is our left and right flap. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna install this score line down here at the bottom, but I'm gonna test it first. When I'm testing it is I'm laying it in here and I wanna make sure that both my flaps can close and that my panel isn't too wide, and it's not. So what I did here is seven and five eighths. So the width of the paper, or the width of the uh, base panel is seven and three quarters, so I made it one eighth inch shorter, and I think that's gonna make it uh, fit in between these two panels, or two flaps very nicely. So this one's gonna get installed on the bottom, and there's two of these. Just like so, so make sure you stay out of the gusset area of your flaps, so they'll close around it. Okay, that one's in, so it's gonna open down like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing this way. So when it's all done, this is gonna open down and then this will open up like so, okay? So this one, I'm going to turn it over so I can get a better handle on this. So this is actually going, I'm gonna rest it against this, close it, and then I'm gonna remove the tape backing. And that's what it's all gonna look like when it's closed, okay? So I'm gonna start a little bit of my tape, fold it back, position the panel, And then when it looks good, I'll, I'll take the rest of the tape off. Okay, so we're gonna rest it inside, like so. Fold that little tab of tape back so I can reach it. And I'm making sure it's, it's lined up left to right, and it is, and it's nested in there nice, and it is. And this is actually sticking out a little more than I want, so I'm gonna trim that down a little bit. That's a little better. Resting it, closing it. I'm gonna push it into place and make sure it's even left to right. Okay, so the first one opens like this, the second one opens like this. Okay, so that is that. And then these two panels, the left and right panels, are going to hold it all closed neatly. So we're going to add a magnet here. So now I need to make a decision on uh, if I want it to open left to right or right to left, and I think I like this. Let 
That looks good. Okay, that. Okay, and now I just want to make sure all my sides are even. Even. You have to do a little bit more work to get it to just right because of the gussets. And then remember, as we add pictures, we're going to need more of that space too. So, is it going? Yep, that looks good. Okay. Now we're gonna add one more feature. So this is the top flap, and remember our pocket, and then we've got left, right, and then we've got a panel that goes up and a panel that goes down. Okay, a lot going on here. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is add two flaps to the top here, centered. Um, they're gonna open uh, up and down. And I'm going to just install this flush centered on the top panel. So I'm gonna find the center point on the flap and the center point on this flap. And then we're gonna mark it and then we're gonna line them up. <clears throat> and I didn't bring a pencil in here, but a pen will work. So it's seven and three quarters. It's hard to see. Okay, and it looks like this, I'm gonna come in um, three and seven eighths inches, which is my center line. If you don't have a Tim Holtz rule, ruler. Okay, and I just got a little mark here. And then this is four and a half. So we're gonna mark it center line at two and a quarter. Okay, I'm gonna turn this all right side up. Okay, we're gonna, that's our, our main page that's sort of holding everything together. And I'm looking for my uh, center line dot here. And my center line dot here. I only marked one. You only have to mark one of the flaps because you're gonna measure the second flap off the first one. That makes sense. So the second flap is going to be installed based on this location. So I'm gonna rest it here and drop it down and it should, actually I don't want it that way. Actually this is gonna close underneath it. So as long as it'll close. I should have dry fit this first. And it looks like I need to take just a smidge off. So it's four and a half by five, but I'm gonna make it just a sixteenth of an inch smaller, and that way it'll close on the inside. And I'm just uh, laying it in, because I want left to right for that to be the guide. Get it in straight. Pretty much. Okay. Now we need another magnet. Now there's already a magnet here, so I think I can get away with, well, it's probably too many layers. Probably too many layers, so I'm not gonna just do one. I'm gonna do two. One here. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. And then this is gonna close like so. Okay, so that is it for this panel. We're uh, Once I get all of this decorated, I may decide to add a feature here, but I haven't decided. I wanna see how bulky this gets first. Um, if not, this will be like a large photo mat here and here. And then the last thing we need to do is add an insert here. And that insert's probably going to be seven, maybe seven by eight, a large one. So it'll go in there. Okay, that is it. So when we get back together, we're gonna decorate all these elements and then we're gonna make some decisions about what to do with this panel. But that is it for now. And again, this is all built on a piece of chipboard and this whole um, piece is gonna get added to um, the folio once we've decorated it. Okay, I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne. Um, I took a break uh, after getting our interactive components added. Now I'm ready to oh, start decorating. Sorry, I keep shocking myself. It's so dry here. Okay, so if you recall, we have this very large flap. Um, that's the main, the first element uh, on page one. And this is the, pic, the um, print that I've uh, decided to use. Ooh, I'm having trouble talking. Maybe too much coffee today. This is from the 12 by 12 collection of um, Lady Vagabond. And um, I'm only pointing that out because, why am I pointing that out? Oh, because I'm also using um, calligraphy in this uh, mini album. So when I um, am using a calligraphy print, I'll be sure to mention that. Okay, so this is from 12 by 12 Lady Vagabond. <clears throat> is the cover and then um, on the page two it's going to have the lady looking through the periscope at the luggage kind of uh, kind of a nice facing of each other when you open it okay and then on the inside I've got this clock this is from the 12 by 12 calligraphy pack and um, what I did was I trimmed these out to fit width wise and then I created two bands that are five inches now I'm gonna add this one and then I'm going to lay this in and trim it to fit. So it's, they're not gonna be equal in size. One's gonna be a little bit bigger than the other and that's by design. I did the same thing for page two. So we'll go over this twice. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this in, and then I'm going to, I want a nice black line between the two. Make sure they're trimmed the same, they are. And I'm gonna mark it on both sides. And I do that in the event that this one didn't go in straight. This is my opportunity to make sure that the border turns out straight, even if it means I have to cut that at a slight angle to achieve it. <clears throat> and in this case, it looks like it was very straight, so I didn't have to make any adjustments, but I, do, I didn't cut enough off. Run one more trim on this. And that should give us the border that we're looking for. Yep, let's get some ink on it and we'll glue it down.
There we go. Nice, nice, nice. I think that's going to make for a nice uh, photo mount right there. Okay, so what's next? Let's go ahead and open this up. So we've got a pocket here and I've trimmed out uh, this paper to go here and to also line the pocket. And then when I was getting ready to do this video, I realized I forgot to trim out a piece for that. So at the very end, we will find some paper to go over that. Let's go ahead and get this piece laid in. It looks like I've already inked it, which is good. Save a little time. This is gonna fit ever so slightly into the pocket and lay down here. I'm gonna turn it sideways so I can get a better handle of how it's fitting into the pocket. Now, I've talked about this before. I like to leave this leading edge without glue because if I put it in too far and have to back it out, I don't wanna leave a trail of glue. So I'm going to uh, about a half inch, stop at about a half inch. Because, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Because it's tucked into the pocket, um, there's no chance of it really peeling up. So you don't really need adhesive below that half inch mark. <clears throat> if that makes, hopefully that makes sense to y'all. One of the things I noticed because we're using chipboard as the base page and not a pocket page, it's not flexible at all. So I've noticed that um, doing features like tucking things into the pocket is a little bit more difficult, achievable, but a little more difficult that, because the base page is so rigid. But the one thing I do like, <laughs> I mean, that's a double-edged sword. It is nice that it's rigid. It feels like things are going in more square because there's no flex to the page. Okay, so there's our base and our pocket. And this was one continuous piece that I split in half, just FYI. Okay, let's go ahead and close this. Okay, so the next thing we've got are the elements that are going on top of this. So there's a top, an upper and a lower here, and I've trimmed these four pieces out. This is from calligraphy also. So I wanna make some decisions about which sides. I like both. So, one, two, three, four, I think it goes like this, yeah. So, I kind of like this, um, this look. And so I think I'm gonna do that on the, the um, B side and then do this more simple pattern on the A side. Um, and partly because I think I'm probably gonna put a chipboard or some sort of a decorative element there. Now I'm gonna use my contrast sheet just so I can see all edges before I lay this in. And it looks like I've already inked it, so we're ready to go. And again, this is from the 12 by 12 calligraphy pack. So basically you're gonna use the better part of a 12 by 12 sheet to cover uh, both the A and B side of this, um, of these flaps because they're four and a half. What are they? The finished flap is four and a half by four and a half. Closer to the edge, there we go. All right. Okay, so there's our B side. We're ready for A. 
And I'm gonna put the A on the top, like so. I'm gonna shift my contrast paper so I can better see my edges. I don't even know why I bother with my fingernails. <laughs> the older I get, the thicker they get. They don't want to get under anything. There we go. Okay, lovely. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so the next thing, I'm gonna open these and then we're going to lay this piece in. So I think I went back and forth on them. This is gonna go here. This is from the 8 by 8 collection pack. Um, and I actually used this from the 12 by 12 in page two as an insert, but this is uh, one of the cut aparts on um, out of the 8x8 collection pack of Vagabond, Lady Vagabond, not calligraphy. And it just so happened that this booklet fit perfectly so on this flap, so I, I really like the look of it, and it's a great journaling spot, but also I think you could do a photo and journaling on one side, half and half. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I'm really happy with that. Okay, now I, again, I think I forgot to do, cut something out for that, so we're gonna have to come back to it. And then um, we've got a lot to cover down here. So we have a left and right flap, and then we have these two um, accordion style flaps. We've got a lot going on here. This is from the four by four, sorry, eight by eight collection pack of Lady Vagabond. And this is what I'm going to use as the base uh, of this feature. It's actually being applied directly to the, the, um, the chipboard base. it was still closing. Now for these extended accordion flaps on the top and the bottom, I cut out two each of these patterns. This is from Lady Vagabond. This is calligraphy. And this is calligraphy. And this is Lady Vagabond 12 by 12. Okay. So I'm going to match these patterns top to bottom. So I think what I'm gonna do right next to the doors is I would do polka dots and polka dots. And then I'm gonna use this pattern uh, here and here. And then I'm gonna use uh, this on the flip side. So we're gonna start by um, adding these polka dot ones. And when this is completely open, I run out of space on the desktop. <laughs> so you have to bear with me a little bit. Okay, so let's get this one in. I'm just judging whether it's trimmed, it looks good. I like this feature, but if I had it to do over again, I think it would make it a little bit smaller uh, not as uh, tall because it takes up a lot of paper. Um, when I was actually doing my paper planning, I realized, wow, um, it's really deep. Um, 
Typically, I like to plan things so that they are um, divisible by four, just because if it's if it's four or eight, um, I can get you know that extra slice out of my 12 by 12 sheet. Um, where if the panel is four and an eighth, then I can use that sliver um, to cover something without having to do color blocking. You can always use it anyway, you just might have to color block, but I think I made these panels a little bit too big. So it's something I learned. I mean, you're gonna have enough, but um, whenever I go through this process, I always kind of walk away with some, some new discovery that'll help in paper planning in the future which by and large in my mind is the hardest part of album design is, um, I mean, you can make all the flaps to your heart's content, but making sure you have enough paper to cover them all is where the challenge is. And knowing that ahead of time and not running out. Okay. So that's pretty. So the next one is, we're gonna do this. It's hard to see because there's a black flap there, but it's gonna go like that, okay? Lovely. So now we've got those sides done. I can shift this back up. And then this is gonna go here. So you see, you get this kind of, this pattern um, as you're opening and closing the flaps, which I think is kind of fun. So you can see how that's turning out. So now we have um, the, those sides done. So now we need to work on these sides, this side. So I have two more patterns. This is from uh, this is from calligraphy, and so what do I want to do? I think I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna set those aside for a moment. We need to do yeah, the B sides. Okay, so I have these patterns. So I'm gonna have to do some color blocking because I didn't have enough um, of the patterns that I wanted. Uh, let me double check. Nope, that's Sir Vagabond. I'm trying to use just calligraphy and Lady Vagabond on this half of the album. So I think I have to do some color blocking here. And I thought I had lined up my papers, but now that I'm flipping through it, I feel a little lost. So I'm gonna take a break and line up the papers that are gonna go on the back side of this and then on these two flaps, and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging with me. I've organized some of the paper that we're gonna use here on um, the rest of page one and I think I've got everything trimmed out and inked so this is from the 12 by 12 collection and I think these look very nice uh, juxtaposed from each other so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in and before we took a break I had covered the a side do a little bit of housekeeping there we go
Mm, I need to adjust that. That's a little too... Push that up a little bit. Okay. All right, now down here, I'm going to do some color blocking. So I've got these two pieces and then this is gonna be trimmed to fit in between. So I like to start by laying these down first. And I've gotta look at this to let you know what, what size it came from. It is, it's from the 12 by 12 collection. like that okay uh, 12 by 12 lady vagabond collection I wasn't being very clear and then now we'll open this up and then we're gonna add this here same thing And it, you know, it's really whatever works here. This is this strip is two inches wide, so you can use uh, any scraps that you have laying around. Okay, now we're going to trim out both of these pieces to fit. So again, this is two inches across. And then I'm just gonna lay this in and we're gonna trim this piece to fit. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Part of the reason I'm doing color blocking, well, I like the way it looks, um, but also, um, I am running out of uh, pieces that are large enough to cover these surfaces, so I am color blocking to finish covering these uh, larger spaces where I may not have had um, a solid piece that I could have used here. Okay, that's lovely. Okay, so that's like that. So now we still gotta cover the flip sides. And then we still have to cover the back side of the upper and lower. So I still need to organize a, a little bit more paper. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have these two pieces left that I am going to place here and then I'm gonna color block the clock on the outside. This is from the 8x8 collection pack. This is from the calligraphy pack, 12x12 calligraphy. And it's a scrap that I happen to have and this is three and a quarter and it just happened to be the, the scrap that was left, three and a quarter. Um, so I'm gonna place these here and then I'm gonna place the clock here. Um, and I'm gonna trim the clock out after I, I place these. These are already inked and ready to go in. So that, this is going to bring this image or this pattern back in on the lower half of this page. I'm 
like so. Remember this has got a double um, score line, so there's a little bit of a gusset here, so make sure you're not putting your paper over that gusset or the second score line. Okay, looks good. Now I am going to trim this out to fit here. And then I'm gonna take what remains and repeat that process on the right hand side. So this is winding up being two, two and five eighths. But again, I really recommend that you lay it in and trim it to fit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we're on to the back sides of these two flaps and I've got one, one piece already identified. So we're going to have to come up with a second piece. But let's go ahead and lay in the piece that we do have. And let's see, it looks like I need to trim it just a tiny bit. Just right. It does. Okay. I think I want. I'm going to turn this so I can see the edge a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I want it here or here. I kind of like the way this flows. Um, and I might do something different down here, more color blocking down on the bottom. So I'm going to turn it so I can see top to bottom. It looks good. Okay. <coughs> Oh, that's hard. That's pretty too. Let's do this. Okay, we're gonna flip it. I don't know if the other side is. Yeah, it's just as pretty. All right. Actually, put a little more on the edge. There we go. I really like these pins. Fountain pens are so pretty. And they're so elegant to write with. They make you feel smart. I don't get it. I don't know why. It just does. Whenever you're using a fountain pen, you actually feel like a, a writer. <laughs> okay. 
that's in. And we need one more down here, but we've already got this one lined up. Sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and put it right here. And I'm going to trim this one a little bit too. Yes. Hey, are you recording? Yes. Just a moment. Okay. Hang tight. I gotta go check on something. Okay, I've located, um, the, the pieces that I'm going to color block. This is from 12 by 12. This is from the calligraphy collection. And I've trimmed this out. I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to trim this to fit. this down to fit so I have to think about how much I want I kind of like this so I am going to trim from this side did I might need to trim a little more it was hard to it's much easier to trim from the outside than from the inside visually it's just easier to see it okay I need to just trim off we do. Okay, looks good, I think. Yep. So nice after I refill my glue bottle, everything flows so smoothly. Of course, when I refill, I also clean my tip so that makes a huge difference. Okay, so that's in. I'm gonna get off any excess glue before I flap it over so that it doesn't stick on this page. Okay, and now we're working on the flip side of the top one. And we're gonna do the same thing. Although, it looks like I need to trim a little bit. Four. Yep, perfect. Do the same thing, we're going to trim off this side, and this time I'm actually going to mark it on the top and the bottom. I 
I don't think I've mentioned it, but I'm using uh, Powder Puffs in Mahogany. That's kind of my go-to color. It seems to work with everything. It's too tall for me to turn it. Mm. I forgot I had trimmed that one piece down about a sixteenth of an inch, so... I'm going to do the same thing for this side. Better. Still not quite enough. That should do it. Now I messed around long enough, I probably I gotta put more glue on it. There we go. Just right. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this sideways so I can show you guys the whole thing. So it opens like so. And I think it closes one way better than, yeah, about the same actually. Once you get all your papers in there, it's pretty bulky and that's why we added that extra um, gusset on these flaps because it is kind of bulky. All right, so there you go. So. Just flip through the elements real quick again. Now we have this deep pocket and um, I've been stalling to put anything in it because I wanted to make sure I had enough paper to cover everything else, but everything is covered now. So I'm going to take um, this cut apart, which is from the Lady Vagabond collection and I'm going to mat it and um, put it on some cardstock that's gonna go inside this large pocket. So hang tight and I'll tell ya, I'm gonna trim down uh, some cardstock. I don't think I mentioned it early on, but um, I normally use 65 pound cardstock and for this project I did 80 pound, um, partly because, well, 100% because of these large gussets. Um, I felt like the paper needed a little more body. Um, if you are comfortable working with 110, that would work as well. Um, I was unable to find a 110 that I felt comfortable using because it was, um, the score lines were not coming off clean and that was bothering me. But if, you can, if you've got a 110 that you like, that would definitely work as well. Although um, when it comes to wrapping these, I think 110 is pretty heavy to wrap cardstock with or chipboard with. So you might want to consider that when choosing your paper or choose a brand that has um, that has multiple weights. So this is seven inches across and I'm trying to decide how deep I want it. I think I'm gonna go to about right there and I'll tell you what that is. Okay, so the insert, I'm gonna tuck it in and make sure I'm happy with this as it's planned right now is seven by nine. It feels a little snug. Now I had mentioned this before, but because we're mounting everything on uh, chipboard, it's quite rigid. So you don't have the flexibility you do with um, a pocket page. So the pocket itself wound up feeling much snugger than, um, than when I do it on a pocket page. I'm just gonna train that out a little bit. Even though I did do flanges all the way around, it's a much tighter fit. Okay, I think I'm gonna change it to eight and a half by seven. Okay, eight and a half by seven. Okay, now I am going to mat this and layer it on for the insert. So I need a few minutes to come up with some paper and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I changed my mind because I didn't want to do all the color blocking that it would take to to put that on um, some cardstock. So this is what I've decided to do. This is the 8x8 collection pack, and it is one of two pieces that I had left. I had this intact, and I have this intact. So I decided to trim this down, and this is what's going to go in that pocket. And I'm just going to trim that last little bit off. So at the end of the day, it is seven, seven by eight and one eight. And then I just trimmed a little bit off this eight by eight. It needed to be narrowed to fit into the pocket. Then we're gonna put this insert in and then we're done. And then the next time we get together, we're gonna to install these two pages and do the cover for Lady Vagabond. So I found that when you open the lower flaps, it's easier to get your insert in. Oh, it's not wanting to go center. Seems a little odd. There we go. There we go. I think you just train it a little bit and it'll start to behave. Okay, so now we're gonna close that back up. Close this our flap down over our pocket and then close that and that is the end of page one thanks everybody for tuning in when we get back we'll do page two and then get these both installed in the book and get the cover for the um lady vagabond done and then we will get to get next time we get up together after that we'll be working on sir vagabond